That how he وسلم, was not an extremist in one, in one way or the other. Allah has said in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, And thus we have made you justly banished nation. 
we have made you a balanced nation, a just nation, a nation that is the best compared to all others. That's how the ulama have defined the word wasafa here. The best nation, the most balanced nation, the just nation, all these terms. The problem, brothers and sisters, that happens um, that happened recently was not about whether we should be wasat or we shouldn't because we all agree that we have to be wasat the problem happens in defining what wasat means and how could you become a wasat and what defines you in the state of wasat now the very hadith that says in which Rasulullah said that I, I, I do part, I do fast, and I do break my fast, and I do uh, make qiyam al layl in part of the night, and then I, I sleep for the other part. We also see another ayah in which Allah Azza wa says to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna Rabbaka Ya'lamu Annaka Taqumu Adna Min Thulutay al layl Wa Nusfahu Wa Thulutha Wa Ta'ifatu Min Al Ladina Ma'ak that Allah verily knows that you spend almost one third of the night praying to Allah Azza wa Jal and sometimes less and sometimes even more up to half not only you but even a group of, of, the, of your followers and that was in a statement of appraising him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so when, when we look at this Perhaps people may say, praying half of the night, that's, that's too much. What I'm trying to reach here is where that pivot, where is that pivot that we can put on the spectrum and say, this is the justly balanced place. This is the middle place. That pivot could be seen from more than one perspective. People who are on the furthest extreme of that spectrum may try to see it as close to them as possible, whereas the other part of the other extreme people on the other side of the spectrum, they try to see that pivot as close to them as possible. When sometimes it's neither close to this nor to that. And it's somewhere there, it's somewhere different. And that is why it is very crucial not only to talk about the need and the necessity of being Ummat al-Wasat the just nation or the nation in the middle or the balanced nation but also to know and to talk about what makes you a balanced nation what was it that made the nation of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the teachings of him al-Wasat and that is ex exactly what, what people now are messing with. And to be fair, there is a minimum guidance that we can get at least from the hadith of Rasulullah and from the ayah to define this. But there is also some margin or some part for what we call ijtihad. In other words, we all agree that we have to be wasat and we all agree that what really defines wasat is the hadith of Rasulullah is the seerah of Rasulullah is his teaching, his tradition we all agree on that perhaps we sometimes agree on it but we don't know how, it, how he وسلم, was and that's where we have the gap but then the third thing that comes after that is when we apply our understanding of those teachings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to specific incidents that we are, that we come across in our life. That's, that's in many situations not a divine way of doing things. That's more of an ishtihad that people do. And that's where people most of the time differ. And to be fair, this third part is the part that we should be very open with or open to 
and not to be and not to monopolize our view on how al wasat should be and say either you do this or you are an extremist so let us at least talk about the the first two pillars of wasatiyya number one is that we have to be balanced we have to be wasat number two is that what really defines wasat is the practice of Rasulullah and then we can talk about the third one which is applying our understanding to specific incidents nowadays which might, we might differ uh, because, because, because Allah Azzawajal made us different and subhanallah you see that Allah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in an authentic hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari a very nice hadith that perhaps summarizes the concept of wasat. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam said as it was narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu in Sahih al-Bukhari. Inna hadha al-deen yusr. Verily, this religion is easy. Walan yushad al-deen ahadun illa ghalaba. And whoever overburdens himself in this religion he won't be able to continue in the same path. فَسَدِّدُوا وَقَارِبُوا وَبَشِّرُوا فَسَدِّدُوا وَقَارِبُوا وَبَشِّرُوا He وسلم, said, so what, what can you do then? سَدِّدُوا قَارِبُوا بَشِّرُوا سَدِّدُوا in Arabic, when you, uh, سَدَّد means to get the target. Like you throw your arrow, and when it gets to that circle, that's, that's sadad. Sadad means you get, you hit the target 100%. That's sadad. And the, the, the meaning of saddidu is that you want to understand exactly what the sharia is all about. And not come with your own assumptions. I want to give examples of these. In many of our um, uh, nowadays issues and problems and how we differ is that defining whether this act is from Sharia or not from Sharia. And unfortunately, we see that it, there is a common uh, misunderstanding of that where people usually mix between their traditions, their customs, and the Sharia part. <coughs> they mix between the wrong teachings that they got in their early childhood with the right teaching from the Quran and the Sunnah. And unfortunately, when you talk to them, they are very strict about it. And they feel as if you are, subhanAllah, far off. Because if you grow up doing something for a long time and you are always been fed that this is the right way, this is Islam, this is Islam, then most likely you will take that for granted. And you can't imagine and you can't understand, you can't appreciate that there might be something better to listen to. So Saddidu here means stay away from any assumption you made about this religion and go and do your best to understand it perfectly. Brothers and sisters, this is actually, this is a problem that we live nowadays and that is we've been monopolized, we've been polarized by certain views by certain parties, by certain individuals, you name it. In the way that we've been brought up, in many cases, is that either my way or the highway. In the tradition of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the way that he taught his Sahaba was very different from that in the sense that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum used to listen to everyone 
And you see that even in the time of those four Imams, may Allah be pleased with all of them, Abu Hanifa, Malik al-Shafi'i and Ahmad al-Hanbal, even in their times, they themselves changed their fatawa a couple of times. Actually, many, plenty of times. Plenty of times. Not only they changed their fatawa, but also at other times they had fatawa that they did not announce to the public. You know why? Because they, in their heart, they believe in what they believe. But they could not get that much of support from the other scholars that make them confident about what they believed in. And that is why you hear things from the ulama, like Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala when he says, قولي في المسألة صواب يحتمل الخطأ That in anything that I say, I believe it is correct. But still I believe that it might be also wrong. And subhanAllah, their etiquette in reaching the truth is how he himself described it when he said, Wallahi, ma jadaltu ahadan, aw khalaftu ahadan, illa tamannaytu an yujri Allahu al-haqqa ala lisanah. That verily, Wallahi, I swear by Allah that I have never been in dispute with someone on a, on a mas'ala Except that I asked Allah and I wished that haq will be will come from his from him from his side, not from my side. And Subhanallah, some of the ulama said that he what he meant was in two folds. Number one, he is not about being famous. He's not about proving his point. He's about following the truth. And number two. This actually reflects how much he loves for people what he loves for himself. Usually when a person finds that the truth is not on his side, he becomes stubborn and he rejects the truth. Not because he didn't know about the truth, but just because he didn't like that it didn't come from his side. So a Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala didn't have a problem with that. But he was afraid or he was scared that perhaps the other partner might have this issue. So he was always hoping that if haq comes on his side, then alhamdulillah, eventually our target is to reach to the haq and I have no problem changing myself. I'm just worried if la samahallah, the other partner has a problem. So saddidu, brothers and sisters, is go after the truth. Don't just limit yourself to what you've been taught. And I say that repeatedly, brothers and sisters. Wallahi al-Azim, it is very sad that many of our teachings that we have got from back home has nothing to do with Sharia. And we have to clear ourselves from that point. Of, from that point. And we have to be really willing to, to change and to really take the challenge and see what, what, what works better in the sight of Sharia. The, the second word was waqaribu. Qaribu means be close to perfect. If you can't be perfect, then be close to perfect. And see, subhanAllah, this is the rahmah of, of, of the Sharia. That Allah Azza wa Jal knows that people cannot be perfect all the time. They may hit the target sometimes, and they may go a different way other times. However, always make your attempt to be as close as possible to the target. And that is waqaribu. And listen to the third word, wabashiru. And get the glad tiding that you will be rewarded. And that, subhanAllah, that, that, this, this, this thing comes after what? After qaribu. So let, look at the, the, the sequence here. <coughs> Try to hit the target. If you can't, then at least be as close as possible to it and be aware and be confident and be happy that you will be rewarded. Meaning, even if you don't get to the target, by you trying to get to the target, Allah Azza wa Jal will reward you. And then Rasul said, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالْغَدْوَةِ وَالْرَوْحَةِ وَشَيْءٍ مِنَ الدُّلْجَةِ 
and gain strength by distributing your acts of worship between the mornings, the afternoons, and portions of the night. And that subhanAllah tells us that we should never see our relationship with Allah as one portion of the time that we do in the, in the day and then we totally forget. We have to always be connected to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because by you being connected to him, even if it is like very scattered, even if it, is, if it was for short times, by you being connected, that is the way that you will be glued, inshallah, to the truth. That's the way that you can guarantee that, inshallah, you are not deviating from the path. <laughs> الحمد لله على إحسانه وشكره له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله تعظيم النشانه وأشهد أن محمدا عبد ورسول الداع لا رضوان الله مصلي وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. So I want to conclude about the 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 the, the, the first two points by saying that we have the opportunity to learn about our religion from the right sources. When we go and, and, and alhamdulillah Allah Azza wa has blessed us with, with, the, um, with the access to all those pub, uh, you know, publications and, and, uh, and books and, and, and things that the, our previous ulama have made. I understand and everyone knows that in today's world we have people who claim to be uh, the authority of giving uh, you know, uh, sharia when they might not be worth of doing this. We always understand this. We all know about this. And that is why the ulama had a very nice statement when they said, مَنْ كَانَ مُسْتَنَّنْ بِأَحَدٍ فَلْيَسْتَنَّ بِمَنْ قَدْ مَاتْ فَإِنَّ الْحَيِّ لَا تُؤْمَنُ عَلَيْهِ الْفِتْنَةِ Whoever wants to just copy a person or copy a view, then let him do that with a, with a alim, with a scholar, whom the whole ummah have accepted and have passed away. For those who are still living, you don't know that Allah may take them off track or that may, they may get, get disguided. And we saw that. Some of the people in the time of Rasulullah after the death of Rasulullah they moved back to Kufr. We know about this. We know that some of the ulama, they, they, they moved from, from Islam to Kufr. Not sometimes even less than kufr, but, but they move, they, people change in their lives. And that's, subhanAllah, that's among the things that we have to understand here, or, or, or have to, to think about. And that is, brothers and sisters, when, when, if I follow a certain madhab, or if I follow a certain alim, or a certain school of thought, and, and I get my fatawa uh, from a certain place, I should be open to other fatawa. I should be open to, to, to hear from other uh, school of thoughts. But then the, 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 the issue here is what, what makes me under, uh, feel or have the confidence that the other school is not like an extremist or not something that is, you know, a, a person trying to make, uh, make up uh, things or a person who is just about being famous or visibility and, and stuff like that. Well, we can always go back to our back to our roots and go back to our uh, resources that Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed us with from the old of the four Islamic school of thought. And I, I have this very sad experience when I hear people saying, "You know, this is in our madhab," and when you go back to their madhab, you find that they are just wrong. Because sometimes people claim that what they found in their area or in their, in their teachings is part of the madhab when it is nothing but a deviation from the madhab. And again, as individuals, as a community like MAPS, as a, a, a big Islamic center, we should be open to all but then open to all those that the whole Ummah has agreed on. Not open to all everything, 
Because we saw, and let me be frank here, we saw recently many places where people have said, they claim they are Muslims, but they, they, they said, let's have a masjid for homosexuals. Let's have a masjid for this, let's have a this. If we want to open our hearts to even that kind of people, that kind of views, which we know by fact that it is off track and has nothing to do with the religion, then we, la Allah, might get deviated. And as I said in the beginning, that the pivot between, between the two extremes and the spectrum might go different directions. And unfortunately, it, it all depends where you are in that spectrum that you might see that pivot or you see that middle differently. So unless you go back to the root, meaning the Quran and Sunnah, and the different and, var and various implementation and explanation and interpretation of that meaning, uh, Abu Hanifa, Malik, uh, al Shafi, and Ahmad bin Hanbal, and those people in their levels, who the whole Ummah have accepted their views. Unless we have all this together, then there is a chance that we, la Allah, might be off a track when we think or when we claim that we are following the wasalt. I want to give two examples or three examples and I see some of our kids here. How could a, how could a person be a wasalt between two extremes? And those are three specific examples um, that I'm trying to give are, are just because they are so common. Let's talk about the food. There are people who are very, very strict. Not only they don't accept uh, any meat that doesn't say halal on top of it, but also it has to be halal from the people that he himself knows. Otherwise, it's haram for, on his point of view. On the other side, there are people who don't mind what they eat. And they go and anything they can eat, even if it were like beef mixed with some 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 uh, uh, you know uh, some some fat of pork or or whatever. And they don't even care. And those are two extremes. A middle person would always try his his best to find the halal meat, but he should not be brave to say haram to other things when he knows that there are other ulama who said it is halal to eat from the meat of the Ahl al-Kitab. Let's be in the middle, brothers and sisters. Let's be open to, uh, to, to all arguments. It is fine for you to commit yourself to a certain way of, of eating, but don't enforce that on people. And don't reject the fatawa from big ulama. Who, who, who are there. Another example is actually <coughs> about our kids in the, in, the, in, the, in the school. You know, there are those kids who go into extremes and they will dress very differently and they will make themselves look uh, awkward or weird in front of the people, in front of their friends. They just want to show they are Muslims. On the other hand, there are kids who will change their Muslim names so that they won't appear as Muslims. They, they will dissolve in everything that, that they, you know, the American society would give so that they will not be distinguished. I, I saw many times people, uh, kids by the name of Muhammad changing their names to Mo. And you know that. Brothers and sisters, and for our kids, let them understand that sticking to Islam is not about what you dress. It's not about showing off in front of the kids. It's about your principles. It's about what you, and what you believe in. It's about the values you have. It's about being convinced and happy being the follower of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you want to make your prayer, like say it's Salat al-Dhuhr, that unfortunately many of our kids miss these days. Don't be on one extreme where you know the kids will go and in front of everyone just make salah Allahu Akbar and then everyone is like, what is he doing? What is he doing? And don't go to the other extreme where, the, where people just forget their salah and then when they go back home it is almost Adhan al-Maghrib and they lost their salah al-Dhuhr and even Asr. Don't go into these two extremes. 
Find a place, talk to the, to the school, talk to the principal. We have a tried that and they are so helpful, very helpful. You can do it in a very nice way. Get the respect from all people and don't compromise your religion. Make sure that when you, when, when, when you stick to Islam, you stick to the meanings of Islam, not to the appearance of Islam. The last thing I want to say is, let's make dua, brothers and sisters, for our Muslim brothers in Syria. May Allah Azza wa Jal be, be, be their help and support. Wallahi al-Azim, when I look at this situation, for a, a, a three consecutive over 150,000 people killed, over 2 million people expelled from their countries, over 200,000 people unknown where they are. They are in prison, but no one knows about them. And, and all those, those kids who have no, no, no parents, who, who went orphan, and those kids who lost their, 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 their education and all that stuff. More than 75% of the infrastructure of Syria of homes and their, the infrastructure of the cities have been completely destroyed. 75% brothers and sisters. So for three consecutive years and we could not do something, that's really shame. Perhaps we can't do, but let us at least brothers and sisters, let us at least make sure that we do this sincere dua to Allah Azza wa for them. Make, make something feel that you have spent this one night doing Salat al Qiyam and do that dua for them. And if, if you can, inshallah, support them with your money as much as you can. Barakallah feekum. Support them in your, in, your, in your public statements when you talk to the people. Make awareness about them. I, I felt that many of the Americans, non-Muslims, are more passionate, are more merciful with us than many of the Muslims, unfortunately. So let's make use of that. Let's make awareness, inshaAllah. Barakallah feekum. Allahumma salli ala nabina Muhammad wa ala Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna kahmidu majid. Allahumma ya rahman wa ya rahim, ahdina li maktul fihi min al-haqqi bi-idhnik. إنك تهدي من تشاء إلى صراط مستقيم اللهم يا رحمن يا رحيم يا حي يا قيوم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام نسألك بأسمائك الحسنى وصفاتك العلى أن ترينا الحق حقا وترزقنا اتباعه وترينا الباطل باطلا وترزقنا اجتنابه اللهم يا رحمن يا رحيم يا قيوم السماوات والأرضين نسألك يا الله أن توفقنا لكل خير وأن, توف... وأن ترحمنا وترحم إخواننا في... في... في كل بقاع المعمورة يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم يا ربنا اكشف الغمة اللهم وانصر المظلومين يا رحمن يا رحيم يا قيوم السماوات والأرضين عباد الله أن الله يأمر بالعدل والأحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن فحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروا على نعم يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر الله يعلم ما تصنعون